I was never a fan growing up. I, uh, I watch a little bit with my grandparents. Uh, never watch WWF growing up. Uh, I saw some local stuff being Stampede Wrestling in Calgary and Portland Wrestling in Portland and saw Dynamite Kid. And as a kid, that really captivated me. So I tried every sport as a kid and I sucked at everything. Anything involving a ball, I was horrible at. Uh, thank God I didn't try hockey because God knows how that would have turned out. Um, but I, I was a very, very angry young man. I had a lot of anger problems and <clears throat> my grandfather, um, I was raised with my grandparents. He thought, well, you should try wrestling. I said, oh, I'm not I'm not wearing spandex, you know what I mean? I'm 10 years old, you know, insecure, but you know, trying to cover it up with what, you know. I remember, I vividly remember walking in there and I was really self-conscious and we did a couple little drills and he put me eye to eye with this kid. It was Ramon Garza. And I remember just looking in his eyes and going, man, you're dead and you don't even know it. And I've never lost that. Like, I feel very comfortable in that warlike environment. And I always wanted to compete and went to college on a wrestling scholarship and uh, got out of college. It kind of was just, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I wasn't going to the Olympics and, <clears throat> you know, just kind of struggling where I wanted to go in life. I didn't want to spend the rest of my life on a farm. And uh, flipped on and saw this show Tough Enough and just saw these guys struggling to run three miles. And I was like, I could do that. So. Went on my dial-up internet and uh, found a school in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, packed up my car, drove there, slept in my car, got trained under Paul Orndorff at what was left of the power plant, and it just, it took off. He was crazy, like homicidal crazy. The first day he showed me his gun collection, and he talked about them, which was interesting. But that, that being put aside, it was, he was the trainer I needed. Him and my later trainer, Tony Casino, were the trainers I needed because I have zero interest in um, glitz and glam. Like, I'm a wrestler first and foremost. So, and Orndorff and, and Casino both trained me to be a wrestler and an athlete. And uh, so that was exactly what I needed. It was, t it was very serious, you know, there wasn't anything coming in late. It wasn't taking it easy. It was hard, it was tough. And I needed that in my life because that reminded me of amateur wrestling and I missed that competition. So. Uh, he was the perfect trainer for me. He was out of his freaking mind, but then again, so am I. So it kind of worked out. I never did the uh, wrestle once a month for a couple years. It was full time here, full time there, full time in Japan. And uh, it's, it's, you know, for better or for worse, never slowed down. There's, there's something innate in human beings when it comes to fighting. You know, uh, you, you, you could have a football game going here and a basketball game going here and, and a concert going here, but if a fight breaks out over here, everyone's gonna run to that fight because it's, it's in our nature. Fighting has always been in our nature. When I first saw that, and you realize at this time, no one had ever seen anything like that before. You know, I'd done amateur wrestling, I'd done a little bit of boxing, but you'd never seen mixed martial arts. And there was honor and prestige in it, and it was just, it was captivating. I mean, the same way, you know, mixed martial arts has kind of just taken over sports in general. To me, that was just, wow, these are the ultimate athletes in the most raw form of combat. And it just, uh, it's, it's still something I'm, I'm a huge fan of today. And, uh, so <clears throat> it was captivating, absolutely, and very inspiring that people could go out and do this. You know, a common theme amongst amateur wrestlers, we don't watch pro wrestling. And I actually got back into professional wrestling through Pancras with Ken Shamrock, you know, uh, Funaki, Boss Rutten. Give up! Shut up! Let me stop! Boss Actually, uh, worked and trained with Sakuraba. Yeah, I was a huge fan of him in his pride days as, when he was you know, the Gracie Hunter. I had always heard of catch wrestling, um, and I was, I, made it a mission after seeing him to seek out catch which is why I went and lived in England and went and trained at the Snake Pit. Um, I was a huge fan of it, and it just, it just was that thing that, if, you, if five people walked in a room and one guy you didn't want to mess with, that guy's a catch wrestler, you'd be like, ooh, I'm messing with him, you know? So 
Uh, Sakuraba was amazing, got to work and train with him, and he's just, he's a, a very gentle human being. He is a true martial artist, but um, when the, you know, the you know, switch is flipped, he's an absolute monster. Oh, he's got the choke, it's over. The choke, it's over, it's over! Masushi Sakuraba has choked out the wild. When you know you're one of the baddest men walking planet Earth, you don't need to go out and prove it to everyone, you know what I mean? So they're very calm and they, they, it teaches you a lot about life as to how to conduct yourself just in life because there's always a challenger that's bigger and better than you. So remaining humble but remaining confident at the same time, you kind of, that's what all that really, that's that spirit of the warrior. You know, I, I'm respectful, I'm calm, I'm humble, but when it's time for battle, I'm taking your head off. I feel very comfortable in that warlike environment and uh, I love I love, I don't have to rely on a team, I tell anyone, it's me and you, and I'm gonna take your head off. And that parlayed into jujitsu. And it teaches you a lot about life, you know, it teaches you patience, it teaches you understanding, it teaches you, you know, just the elements of just being wholesome because you, you could be you could be strong as you want, it doesn't matter in jujitsu. You know what I mean? You have to learn, take the time and learn technique and uh, I love the human chess aspect of it. So I'm a very physical person, um, if you haven't guessed by now. And I, and, and, I, and I like violence. Now it's up to Davey Richards. Look at this. To take both Hayashi yeah. and Kondo on. Oh. But I also like violence used for the right reasons. So you know, Jiu-Jitsu teaches you to be a better person and also to be a, a, a more fierce competitor. And I like the balance of both. So I'm a huge fan of any kind of combat sport and, and, and partake in all of them. Amateur wrestling and jiu-jitsu completely saved my life uh, because I was extremely angry. And uh, anyone who comes from kind of a troubled childhood, you know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of whys, you know, why did this happen? Why wasn't I good enough? And things of that nature. And the problem with those questions, there's no answer. It's out of your control. You know, I don't know why a certain guy's dad left, walked out or why mom did this or whatever. Why, why are they bullied? But in jiu-jitsu, you have control. The more time you put in, the more control you have. And it's funny because you're so angry and you learn how to control people and where you could hurt them, you all of a sudden don't want to hurt them anymore because you, you, it silences your demons. And that's what it did for me and what it continues to do for me. So in, in pro wrestling, for example, I have always struggled with, well, I'm the best wrestler, why should I be on top? Well, because this guy likes this guy. That's just the nature of the beast. This is how it goes. And uh, I couldn't, I did, had no control. So maybe I'm a control freak, but jujitsu, I, I like the, it's honest. That's the best way I can put it. It's so honest. If I go out and I grapple this guy and he beats me, he was better than me. No, no, no one told him, you know, no one, you know, controlled or, you know, was the puppet master. It's very honest and very um, innate. And that's something I need in my life for balance. So it, it, it can turn a very angry person with no answers into a very calm person with a lot of answers. North America is a lot more, <clears throat> a lot more show, uh, a lot more, you know, show business, entertainment. And England is a lot, a lot more sport, but I would say a lot more ground based, you know, a lot more actual technical wrestling. They're really well known for that. And Japan is 100% considered a sport. Um, you'll be hard pressed to find a professional Japanese wrestler that, that hasn't, you know, been a kickboxer or a wrestler, an, an Olympic wrestler, a judoka, um, because you're kind of, not required, but it's very much desire for you to have an actual sports background. So I'd already had a job in Japan. And I was like, I want to live in the dojo because you always heard these horror stories of, you know, thousand squats a day, 500 push-ups, run 10 miles, you know, just getting the crappy out of you. And I wanted that, you know, because that was like the rite of passage. And uh, I, I went and lived in Japan for four months and I uh, went through that whole thing. And, you know, you're, it's brutal, man. You're there and you're, you're pissing blood and, you know, you're all getting through the guy. You can't, you know, you're, you're eating your chonko, you know, and you can't even raise your neck because all the bridges. And, but uh, I do know when, when you come back, everyone looks at you differently because you've earned it. You've earned your right to be in the ring. And it's, it's a rite of passage and a lot of people, I mean, there's many stories that, you know, guys will escape in the middle of the night and never come back. I mean, it's, it's, it's broken quite a few people. And I, uh, I have a large, you know, badge of pride because I, I, a lot of people got in the ring, but I earned my right to the ring, to get in the ring. So it's a, it's a big deal for me. So I prefer the Japanese style. <laughs> Oh. 
In North America, it's, it's, it's very much crowd interaction. And I, I mean, there is the respect there, but it's more, they see us as entertainment. And it's just like going to a rock concert. You know, the last thing a rock band wants to play in front of is a silent crowd, you know what I mean? Because it's entertainment, you know? You could have a song about killing people, about religion, and no one thinks, man, they're really gonna kill us here. So it's, it's promoted like that. Whereas in Japan, it is considered 100% a real sport. So while they're silent, they're, they're intensely watching, and that's them showing respect. And as you go and progress along in Japan, they'll notice even the tiniest little things, like a little look that you'll do or anything, because they've been intently watching as opposed to doing cat calls in the United States. So, um, much higher level of respect in Japan. Well, uh, me and my partner were brought in and pushed right away. Uh, we, we, you know, we won the tag title several times. We, you know, we, you know, and we've had so many. I mean, we've had so many great matches that have lost count in just a short matter of time. You know, and granted, we've been placed with really good opponents. I'm very fortunate to be able to compete at the level I do. We've been sent all over the world, and we've um, we've won titles and just had great feuds. I mean, there's been you know the thing with the dirty heels. There's been all the matches with the Bromans. There's been just everything, even the things we're doing now. You know, I mean, the, la the last man standing match we just had is getting rave reviews. Bully Ray, he has a, he, he's old school, that's the best way I can put it. You know, you have to earn his respect. Yeah, I get it. You're the world tag team champions, but you will never be team 3D. You know, the first few matches we were, we were told what to do, which is, you know, like, I just, I probably should listen, but if someone tells me what to do, it's kind of like, that's a challenge to me, and I just, you know, I get, you know, I don't know, but. So I took it to him a little bit, and he liked it, you know what I mean? And by the end of the series, he was asking us what we wanted to do. You know, you got to give him credit. You got balls, you got guts, and your time is now. Oh! And that last match at Full Metal Mayhem, I had a broken leg. Matt had a broken toe. Everyone was hurt, and we just, we all worked together to make it happen, and somehow we pulled it off. And yeah, it was, uh, it was good. Oh, this is big, man, You're big! You're kidding, this is anticipation, and you can just feel it so high for full metal mayhem. They were professional, all of them, uh, but they brought it, and, and, and they could take it. So it, it was competition at its finest. Oh! Wow, what a kick by oh! Edward. Keep your eyes on Matt Hardy. What's he going to do here? I don't count it! Oh, my! Those two teams were fighting to say that, hey, we could hang with the young crowd. We're still the best. We're still on top. And me and Eddie were there to say, I beg to differ. No, you're not. You know, I'm not intimidated by anyone. It was a mutual respect, but it was also, it was a competition, and that's what made that so special. Oh, my God, look at this. Oh, Bully out of the way, and Hardy's oh. going through the table. Oh. Oh. Look at Matt Hardy and Bully. No way, no way, no way. I remember I really wanted to do something big, and I, I just, I, I have, I don't have any interest in regurgitating things, so I was like, I had an idea to, do, to get power bombed on a guardrail, um, which everyone thought was crazy. But then again, I kind of have a reputation for being crazy, so it kind of works out. Again, gonna go power bomb. Oh no! Oh no! Mike. Not, not on that guard! No! 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 no. Oh my god! Oh my god! Did you see that? Incredible! Who will win the tag title series? I remember. Uh, Eddie got pushed off a ladder from way high up, and I'm just like, oh, man. Eddie's gonna do it! Oh, no. Oh, Mike, no! Bully, don't do it! Don't, don't do it! Oh, he's gonna do it! 
Oh, God, that was a high drop. Just piecing it together, thinking like, man, are we really gonna be able to pull this off? It's so much crazy stuff. And I remember Jeff did this huge half a ladder outside through tables. And it was just, everyone was just taking these huge chances and everyone's hurt. Davey's gotta try and push this guy, do something to stop oh, Jeff's close. Oh no, Jeff's close. If Jeff gets oh my god, my, up on top. look at Bully on the outside. Look at Bully! No! no, 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 no. no. That's ridiculous. When, when people really believe in what they're doing, it, go, it goes far beyond this. That's why I hate this entertainment stuff. You, you can't go out there saying, I'm out here to entertain. You have to believe in what you're doing and say, you know, I am the best at what I do and I'm willing to do anything to prove it, not only to the people in the rain, but the people watching at home and the people in the back. When you have that, that is magic and that's what happens to you. So you can have injury, you can have circumstance, you can have whatever you want. But if you have human desire to be the best like we all did, well, you saw what happened. Magic happens. So that was, uh, that was real. That was definitely real. Um, I have a very different relationship with, with wrestling than I think anyone in the business because I'm not a fan of it at all. Uh, Angelina Love is my wife, but res wrestling, whether it be amateur, pro, or whatever, has always been my mistress. It's been the thing that has been, it's been the one constant in my life. And I hate wrestling. I hate all of it. Uh, and I hate it because I love it so much. And no matter how many times I try to put it in my back pocket, it always seems to come back out. It was there for me when no one else was. Um, it completely saved my life. And, uh, and uh, there's days I wake up and I hate it and I want to quit. And there's days I want to take over the world. But the bottom line is anyone who pays money to see me gets their money's worth. You know, I never hold back. I, I have chosen because it is so near and dear to me. I'm not doing this for fame, fortune, or any of that. I'm simply here to be the best wrestler in the world. I have zero interest outside of that. I have no interest in mediocrity. But when I say I want to quit, it's because that day I feel like I want, I want to quit. And if I, the next day I say I want to stay in forever, it's because I want to stay forever. It, and I, I will do as I see fit because this is my journey. And uh, I'm happy that other people are along for it, but I'm not. I'm not playing for their approval on things because when I go to sleep at night, I need to know what wrestling does for me. And if it's taken away from me, I'm done. But if it's there for me, <clears throat> I'll hear forever. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but the bottom line is whenever I do decide to quit, uh, I will go out on top and I will always give people their money's worth. I'm assuming you want complete honesty. Um, the, the best moment I've had was walking around a corner talking to my tag partner and, and seeing my wife for the first time and just, I mean, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> here I am talking about being all, uh, uh, you know, aggressive and stuff like that, but I mean, I had a subscription to Muscle and Fitness Magazine in, in this small farm town. And I remember her, she was on it, along with some other knockouts, and honestly, I can't even tell you who else was with her on it, but I just remember thinking she was the prettiest girl I'd ever seen, and you know, like here she is in a magazine, and I'm this farm town kid in the middle of nowhere, so you kind of don't think you're ever gonna meet. And, uh, and just, we, we had never seen each other up until then, never. And uh, yeah, me and my tag partner, Eddie Edwards, we were uh, walking around a corner. I saw her and I was like, yeah. And I just, uh, I told my partner, I was like, dude, I'm gonna marry her. And, and uh, yeah, finally asked her out and uh, it just blossomed. So very few people get to even meet the girl of their dreams and I got to marry her. I learned a lot of not how to be a man from uh, watching my father, and I learned a lot how to be a man from watching my grandfather. So, with my son, it, it's about living by example, you know, and that's a big part of being a man is, you know, I, I can be a black belt, I can be, a, you know, the best wrestler, I can that, but if I'm, if, if I'm not good to my wife, and I'm not good to people, and I'm not, you know, consistently striving to better myself, well, I'm just teaching him to be selfish, you know what I mean, and putting energy into the wrong thing, so. It, that and, 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 you know, martial arts and, and has calmed me quite a bit. I was pretty crazy for a while, you know. I was not someone you'd want to wrestle if I was in a bad mood. But, uh, you know, him and my wife have really, uh, you know, calmed me. And not, maybe not calmed me, but put my aggression into where they should be, you know, and taught me how to be a better man. Because my wife, she's, uh, you know, she's very nice and pretty and soft-spoken, and boy, let me tell you, there's a whole other side of her, let me tell you, and which is good, which is good, because you need a strong woman.
<clears throat> um, when you're someone like me to uh, not let me get away with things and, and be accountable for my actions. So it, it, it's been very good. It's taught me how to be a better man, which I'm always open for. Life is very good, it's, uh, and it's only getting better. Thank you.